So what was the decision making process like with Vic and when, like what was the timetable of it? Well, we found out about a month ago, you know, that the damage is there. And this is an injury that a number of people, if you can handle the pain, you can try to manage it by wearing a brace. And um, so we, we knew with the, with the red shirting rules, you know, he had a little bit of time if he wanted to try to play through it. You know, you have a, a number of games you can play before you have to make that decision. So that was the plan. And it was always up to him and his family because, like, none of us know what that feels like except him. So, you know, to, to make him play or to make him sit out, it was always about his, his level of pain and what he felt he could do if he felt he could help the team. So, you know, we, he missed some practices. He did not play. Um, in our, our scrimmage that we had. And uh, we decided to play him in the exhibition game just to see. And, um, you know, I thought he played pretty well, but the next morning it just was killing him. And, you know, he came in and we sat down and we, his parents got on the phone and we just decided for him and for us and for everybody, this was the best decision. So we could get, have the surgery now, uh, would get him healthy by the springtime and it would give him all spring and summer to be ready for next year. So this is the kind of thing that like, if it happened in February, maybe he might've been able to play through it for the end of the, for the last month? I think maybe, yeah. I mean, he was playing, for, he played with it for a month. Right, yeah. So, I mean, he was practicing, you know, most of the practices he was still out there. Um, so he was playing with it. It just, you know, would pop out. Okay, it would just, it just became, it got worse and worse. And it just got to the point where, you know, he wasn't comfortable out there. He was thinking about it too much. And um, so it was, this was the right decision. and. You know, I think now it's you know it's it's not like we just found this out. Our guys, you know, we've we've prepared for this. So, you know, we've we've been playing without him in practice. We've scrimmaged without him, and it's a big loss because he brings a lot to our team. And I I hate it for him because he had a great summer. He had a really good fall, and I thought he was really poised to have a breakout year. And you know what though, it's we're not going to cancel our season. You know, guys got to step forward and. And we got to find a way without them, and, and that's what we intend to do. So, what's the adjustment with the rotation? Is it Scotty more at the three? Is it maybe Aaron and Tab at the three? I think all of the above. You know, I think I think even Sanjay. I mean, I think we have four guys who have the ability to play minutes there. So, um, you know, like I said, I I don't really view. I think we have a lot of guys. I don't know in terms of starting coming off the bench. I do know um, that everyone's going to be called upon. Um, You'll see different lineups out there, and the way we play anyway, it's our our two, three, four spots are really interchangeable. So it's not like guys have to learn new positions. You know, it's it's a it's kind of a positionless offense where they've been running those spots, and and we've played a lot without them. So it's uh, it's just now a matter of going out there, and you know, guys have to step up collectively, and all those guys you named are, are going to have opportunity to do that. The red shirt, uh, red red shirt procedure stuff. Right yeah, the yeah, that's the plan and that's something you file at the end of the year, you know, for a medical hardship, but I would assume with him having a surgery and you know that that's not going to be a problem. And you know, in the long term, he's got to use the positives from it. You know, he can still you know get stronger. Um, and now he'll still have 3 years left to play. So, um, it's really a similar injury that we you guys saw that were here with Drew Crawford a couple years ago. Um, that that he event Drew played the night, you know, it's the same exact thing. And Drew played until the threshold, and then he decided to shut it down at the last minute. So it was the same exact situation. Trey Demps missed his freshman year with the same exact injury. So um, our doctor, I mean, it's something we've had here. Uh, Vic can lean on those guys, and uh, both of those guys came back stronger than ever. So, you know, we got to view, and him personally, we have to view the positives from it. And now we just have to move on. Like, I mean, he's going to be great in, in practices with his voice and his energy and all those things. but. When it comes to playing, we, we have to move on with the guys we have, and that's what that's what we've been trying to do. We said a month ago that, that uh, Vic and, and um, Glenn Scotty yeah. were the two X Factors on this team yeah. who had to perform well. Yeah. Why do you think Scotty now is going to be able to? Well, I don't think it changes Scotty's role at all. You know, I just no. I mean, I just think Scotty has to be Scotty. I mean, he he does different things than Vic. Um, I just thought both of those guys coming in the year were huge because they were freshmen who got a lot of experience that we needed to have that sophomore feel to them, you know, where they, they looked like veterans out there. So I don't think it changes Scotty's role all that often. He just has to be him. I think what it does is, you know, some of the other guys will, will have more opportunity. You know, I think, um, you know, you'll see Sanjay, Aaron, and Taphorn, those three guys in particular, 
have to take on some of those minutes, you know, at that spot, as well as all of them playing together at times. So I, I don't think it changes Scotty's role at all. What's more important, replacing his rebounding or scoring? Uh, I think his rebounding. I mean, that was the best thing he did. You know, he. I mean, that was the best thing he did for us. I mean, he was our best rebounder. You know, he, he was. I thought it was his his best trait that he brought with his. I mean, he. You guys saw he gets rebounds above the rim in traffic, and you know that's something we have to make up for. You know, it's got to be a collective effort, and it hasn't been something that's been a real strength of our team. So when you lose the best guy, when it, when it's not already something that's really a, a strength, we got to work that much harder to be a be a good team rebounding team. Is it, it going to be tougher for you guys to push push the ball on offense without him? I hope not. You know, I I still you know I, I think you. Obviously, he doesn't play, but I'd, I'd like to still push the pace a little bit. Um, you know, I still think we have the personnel to do that. And, um, you know, it's just one less guy. It's just one. And, you know, I still have uh, still have amazing confidence in all the guys playing. Um, for instance, like the other night, a guy like Gavin maybe didn't get a lot of time now. He gets an opportunity. I mean, it just guys, guys are going to be called on. We, we felt all along, you know, we... We are a function of our group. We have to be a sum of our parts. Um, we have good players, but we don't have one or two guys that are just going to carry us. We need to, to play team basketball. We need to rely on each other on both ends. And um, I have the confidence, and I think the guys do too. And you know, I think it can be a positive. You know, people people are going to think we should cancel the season or not play or wait till next year. And you know, hopefully that drives our guys. I mean, I I know we still are confident that we can play good basketball and and be successful and. And it starts Friday night, and we're looking forward to see what we can do. What do you hope to, hope to accomplish in the night after the season beginning of the Friday? Yeah, well, I mean, first and foremost, we need to learn how to win. You know, I mean, you got to play well. you got to win games in November and December uh, to set yourself up for, for the conference. But certainly now, I mean, continue to develop our rotation, uh, figure out what's good for us, what's not so good, um, how to manage our group. Um, and there's just no, there's no substitute for doing it in game-like situations. You know, getting out there and executing, playing against other teams, scouting reports, game plans, uh, things of those nature. I know our guys are excited. It's been a long summer, a long preseason, and it's good to be able to finally start playing some other teams and, and get better. You talk about the signing class. It's got to be exciting yeah. to see these guys. Yeah, a lot going on today. Uh, <laughs> so, But I'm, I'm really excited about the three guys we have coming in. Um, I think all three of them bring things that we need. You know, uh, Isaiah Brown is the leading scorer in the state of Washington. You know, so when you lose a guy like Trey Demps, uh, you know, bringing a guy in who can put the ball in the basket and make plays and, you know, has an ability to create uh, offensively and, and a strong Big Ten ready body, um, I think he, he really adds to our guard core. And, you know, Rapless, to the two local product, Rapless to me is that, you know, those versatile guys that, that I like out there. You know, he's 6'9", uh, he can play multiple spots. He's a hard-nosed kid. He's tough. Um, you know, he's he's gotten better. His 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 improvement rate has been huge over the last two years. And then with Barrett, you know, Barrett to me um, is a guy just in the Big Ten to have that physical big body uh, that can play against the guys we have to play against. And and Barrett, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find a kid in the last three years that has improved as much as Barrett has. He's completely changed his body. He's gotten better in every aspect. And those are the guys we love. I mean, we've seen it with Alex Ola. I mean, bigger guys. I think he's got a great upside. And certainly to have two guys that are local products that were highly touted by a lot of programs in this area in our conference, to be able to get those guys to be a part of what we're doing is a big thing. Yeah, I don't know if it hurts. I mean, it's nice to have your class and everything, but the reality is they're still going to play together a lot, you know. And you know, you got you take a guy like Vic. I mean, really now, and you know, I didn't mention, you know, just so we know, the the plan is to redshirt Derek Pardon as well. So you know, I I think he's got a huge upside. And with the way our front line is right now, now certainly you're one rolled ankle away from maybe not having him redshirt. So, I mean, right now, you know, the plan is for him to get a year of development under his belt. And now all of a sudden you put him in the freshman class next year, you put Vic in the sophomore class, you still have a lot of young pieces in the program, but guys who are veterans. So I, I think we're set up still for the future. Now, does it hurt in the short term? Absolutely. I mean, Vic Law is a really good player and we're going to have to try to make up for it and, and do what we can. But, you know, from, from a long-term perspective, you know, I think it still sets us up to have a number of young pieces in the program that can grow together. 
How, how, how can Law develop uh, his voice, shall we say, as a leader on a yeah. team? You know, yeah, what I'd like for him to do is really, really, I've given him the, the challenge of really locking in on the guys that kind of play his spot. Uh, Scotty, Sanjay, Taphorn, Falzon. I want him to really kind of lock in on those guys and kind of live through them. Mm -hmm. So when they come out of the game, you know, he can be a voice to, and he's already told me being out, you know, we made the decision after the exhibition game. So he's been out since then. And he's already said what he's learned. Sometimes you just take yourself out of the equation and you watch. You have a tendency to pick things up, maybe things you didn't see, mm -hmm. what the coaches were trying to see. So I think, I think at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm always optimistic. I try to get the positives out of it. Um, it's not a career ending thing. He's gonna be fine. Uh, he'll be back in the spring. I think in the long run, it could end up being a great thing for his career as, as long as he attacks his rehab and, and gets to work. Just to clarify, the decision was made the day after the scrimmage? Or? Day after the Quincy game. The Quincy game. Yeah, we played in that game, and then he came in and yeah. met with me, and we wanted to see how it was going to go. So, and we just, uh, you know, with with signing day, we, we weren't hiding anything. We just knew this would be the first day for media. So that's why we waited a few days, but we decided... Uh, we decided on Saturday, you know, just how he felt, and after assessing everything, he just he just felt he couldn't help the team. So, and, and the whole time, I was super supportive either way. You know, if I admire him for trying, mm -hmm. you know, the fact he he was excited, he knew what he could maybe bring this team. He loves his teammates, and for him to to try shows the kind of guy he is. And so I knew when he said he couldn't go that, that it was time to shut down. So it was definitely the right decision. How important is it to start the season with a win on Friday night? <laughs> important. <laughs> important. I mean, you know, anytime you play the first game, I don't care. I mean, these guys are college kids, so you see it all. Everyone has a little bit of jitters. You know, it's just, it's, it's common. I mean, we've been working now for about, you know, since June, summer school, and we've built up to this point of the journey beginning for real. So you come into a fir uh, first game, everybody's a little bit nervous, coaches, players, because you want to get off to a great start. You want to play well. So I think it's important for us to come out and you know, find a way to, to maybe force a few turnovers, get a couple layups, go inside, kind of let the air out of the balloon. I mean, I think last year we were so nervous. I think we were down like 12 to nothing to Houston Baptist before you know, we, we started. And so you hope that that's not the case, but you see it so often with all teams because it's the first game of the season and and everybody is so anxious and, and excited to play. So what are you going to look for in the first game without Vic? Anything specific? Are you going to be able to learn anything from this first game? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, like I said, for us, we, we have to be a team that plays team basketball. You know, we aren't a team that can just give one guy the ball and let somebody create. You know, we have to offensively, we got to run our offense. We got to set screens. We got to play off each other. We got to share the ball. Uh, we got to use our big guys. You know, we got to try to get some easy baskets. And then I'd like to—I wasn't as pleased with our defensive effort in the Quincy game. Um, you know, I thought uh, I thought we had some real breakdowns. I didn't think we talked well and communicated. And um, you know, they punished us for it, which was good. I'm glad that happened. You know, we were exposed a little bit. So we've been working a lot this week to clear clean that up and get our defense back on track. All right, everyone. Thanks.